Okay, so if you enjoy trying to figure out interesting and challenging math problems, well, this is the perfect question for you. Okay, so we have two squares here. We have a big square and a small square inside of the big square. And what we're trying to do is find the area of the small square. Okay, now we do have some information here and uh, we have the diagonal of the big square. So from the center of the square to this corner is six millimeters. All right, so that is all the information that you have to try to figure this out. And again, we're trying to determine the area of this small square. And uh, just to be crystal clear, the corner of this small square is also in the center of the big square. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna show you exactly what we need to do to determine the area of this uh, square. Now, there's not one way to do uh, this problem, but uh, I think I'm gonna show you a very nice and interesting approach. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct uh, solution here is 18 millimeters squared. Now, if you got this right, will you definitely get a happy face and an A plus? If you're like uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't know how you got that answer. Well, again, there's not one way, but uh, I'm gonna show you a very interesting way because we need to uh, really talk about squares, right? And uh, that means we need to talk about right angles and right triangles. So let's see exactly how to find the area of this small square right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual solution. And first, we need a strategy, right? So how can we determine the area of this small square right here? Well, it's probably a good idea to understand what the formula for the area of a square is. So the area of a square is side squared. Okay, in other words, if I know this side and this side, if I multiply uh, this side times this side, of course, the, the lengths are the same in a square, uh, that is going to be the area. So that is the area of, the squ of, uh, uh, of a square. That's the formula. Of course, we're going to have to calculate uh, this um, area in just one second. But how do we get this length? We're looking for this length and this length. How can we possibly get this length if we only have this uh, piece of information right here that the midpoint through the diagonal? Again, this uh, line from here to here is called the diagonal of a square. And we're told that the midpoint or halfway through is six units. Well, we need to kind of take a, a closer look at what's going on here. And in a square, the angles in a square are 90 degrees. So all of these right here are right angles. So uh, now the diagonal splits this 90 degrees, right? So a diagonal is uh, chopping through that 90 degrees. So one half of 90 degrees is going to be equal to 45 degrees. So what we have here is a 45 degree angle, and this is also a 45 degree angle, and this is a right angle right here. So let's just kind of pay attention to this little triangle above this small square. And if we can determine the uh, lengths of the sides of this triangle right here, okay, well then we will have actually determined uh, the side of this uh, uh, small square. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus in our efforts on figuring out the sides of this small uh, triangle because we do have the hypotenuse of this uh, small right triangle. Okay, so can we, again, if we can get this side, then we could determine the area of, a, uh, of this square in this problem. So anytime you're dealing with a math problem, whether it's an algebra problem or a geometry problem, you have to look at the problem, study the problem, and there's different ways to approach uh, the problem. Okay, there's uh, this particular problem can be done or solved in various ways. So you need a strategy. Okay, so pick a strategy that works. Of course, if you don't understand the properties of uh, the diagonal um, in a square or how to find the area of a square, you know you're not going to be able to figure this thing out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of think about this problem in terms of uh, uh, this way. So we have this small triangle. Okay, so this one right here uh, is this triangle. Okay, so I'm just going to break this out so we can kind of concentrate on this. So these angles right here are the same. So this is a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. So we have 45, 45, 90. 
Now that's important to understand because this is what we call a special right triangle. Okay, so there's some things that we know about a 45-45 degree or 45-45-90 degree. But one thing that we definitely know about this triangle is that it is a right triangle. So what should come to mind? Well, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Anytime you see a right triangle, this is probably one of the first things that should pop into your head. Now, if you're not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to show you how it works in just one second because this is going to be a big part of how we solve this problem. Okay, so again, what we want to do here is see if we can find this length x. Okay, of course, it's going to be the same side because when you have a 45, 45, 90 degree uh, right triangle, the sides are congruent. Okay, so if we can find what x is equal to, then we can kind of go back over here to our triangle, right? I mean, our square, excuse me. So here, because the top of this small triangle, let's focus in here so no one is confused. Matter of fact, let me erase this. Okay, so right here, okay, if we can find this length, which of course is going to be the same length as this, this will be actually the side of the square. So this, uh, we're going to call this uh, x because you don't know what this is, but this x will be the same as the side of the square, and we want to find the area of that small square, so this is going to be x times x, or x squared. Okay, so really what we're trying to do here is figure out what x squared is equal to, because that will be the area of the small square. Okay, so hopefully you understand the strategy, so let's go ahead and take the next step which of course is have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now what stopped this lovely math video uh, if it wasn't that important? Now, of course it's important to me uh, to have you subscribe to uh, my channel. Uh, and you know, now I'm not going to uh, say it's not, but really my objective is to reach as many people as I can that wanna learn math, who need help in math, and are particularly frustrated with math. People are like this, I don't like math, I don't understand math. Well, people don't like things they don't understand. And uh, math is one of these kind of classic subjects that unfortunately, uh, a lot of people just don't get um, good instruction, okay, when it comes to mathematics. I'm not trying to knock any math teacher uh, out there, but uh, you know, if you don't understand your teacher, you're going to be frustrated. So what I'm trying to do is connect with these people because people give up on math and that has uh, big implications for their future. So by you subscribing, it does help that YouTube algorithm, uh, you know, connect me with those people that could benefit from my work. But uh, if you're going to subscribe, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well because, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really make sense to subscribe and then not know what latest videos I am posting. Okay, so thanks so much for listening to me. Let's get back to this problem. Okay, so again, our objective here is to determine what x is equal to. So we have x, x, this is our little uh, small triangle here. We know the hypotenuse, which is the midpoint of that diagonal is six. So if we, if we could solve for x, then we can figure this problem out. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to what I stated in, in the beginning of this video when we're talking about right triangles. One of your uh, biggest things that you always want to kind of rely on when you, when you see a right triangle is the Pythagorean theorem. Now the Pythagorean theorem is not going to solve every single problem that you're gonna have with a right triangle, but it's absolutely necessary uh, that you think of it because you could definitely use it and probably uh, the majority of the time, the majority of the times when you have a right triangle problem, you're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just talk about this is real quick. You can see I have this work laid out, but uh, let's make sure we understand what's going on here. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. What does this mean? Well, a, okay, matter of fact, let me just erase this here real quick. So a and B are the shorter sides of a right triangle. Now, of course, in this particular uh, case, because we're dealing with the 45, 45 uh, degree, 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle, these are actually the same length. But oftentimes, you know, you'll have a right triangle, something like this, where they're not. But uh, that's not important. What side you call A, what side you call B, these are the lengths of this side. All you need to remember is that the longest side of a right triangle is the variable c. That's called the hypotenuse, okay? Okay, now, what does this uh, uh, state, the Pythagorean theorem? Well, 
what it's saying is if we square this side, then we add it to the square of this side, it's going to be equal to the uh, square of the longest side or the hypotenuse. And that's what this is saying. So uh, this works in every single right triangle. And of course, we can use it to solve this triangle. So this side is x, and this side is x, and this side right here is 6. This is the hypotenuse. So this is going to be c, and this can this one or this one can be a or b. doesn't make a difference. So let's go ahead and plug in our respective information to figure this problem out. Okay, so a squared, we'll call that x squared, plus b squared, we'll call that another x squared, is equal to c squared, which of course will be 6 squared. All right, so x squared plus x squared is going to be 2x squared. 6 squared is 36. So let's go ahead and solve. And we're looking at this equation. This is actually a quadratic equation. And some of you might be focused in on here, like, oh, I got to solve for x because your algebra mind is taking over. You're like, all right, I'm going to solve for x, but we don't really even need to solve this equation fully. Okay, now on our uh, way to solve for x, what we have to do is divide both sides of the equation here by 2. And when we do that, we get x squared is equal to 18. Now, some of you are going to be inclined to want to take the square root of both sides and solve this equation for x. But is that important? Well, no, it's not important because, remember, uh, we're looking for the area of that small squared, and that is equal to x squared. Okay, we don't need x. We could find x, but all we're going to have to do is multiply by x again to get back to x squared. So if you are paying attention to, you know, the strategy, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute here. I don't have to take that next step. Why do more math work uh, if you don't have to? And there is our lovely solution. x squared is equal to 18, which, of course, is the area of that small square. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in geometry, check out these courses right here. So in my pre-algebra course, I have a couple of chapters on basic geometry, but uh, if you have to understand all things geometry to include uh, proofs, then you gotta check out my full geometry course. Now, if you want a good math review of basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my math skills rebuilder course. All right, so I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.